Good afternoon, everyone. This is Pete Moriello with Market Monday for Roselle, New Jersey. Today, we're going to start off with some market data in Roselle. There are 66 active listings. We're talking about single family homes. So there's 66 active listings, 65 homes that have sold so far. The average sale price for a home, $227,021. And they're on the market for 64 days. Last year at the same time, the average sale price was $207,618. They were on the market for 55 days and 61 sold last year at the same time. Property value has increased $19,403. These are for single family homes. Now we're gonna talk about multifamily homes in Roselle. There are eight active multifamilies currently listed right now in the MLS. The average sale price for a multifamily home is $254,980. They're on the market for 85 days and six have sold so far. Last year at this time, the average sale price for a multifamily was $240,747. 41 days on the market and 14 sold last year at the same time. There's a multifamily property value increase of 14233 I'm going to continue to do this uh, market update at least once a month just to give you a pulse on the market and see where we stand in Roselle. Um, obviously, right now, inventory is a little low. There's a lot of buyers out, so this is a seller's market. Uh, a lot of homes in Roselle are going for over asking. We're going through a couple of bidding wars. I've been going through that um, for the last couple of weeks right now. It just is for your knowledge, just for you to know. Um, I'm also, a second part of this um, Market Monday, I had the opportunity to interview Brian Ruiz. Brian is a real estate attorney. And he's going to talk about what he does when he represents someone on the selling side of a transaction or a buying side of the transaction. Hope you enjoy the video. And once again, Pete Moriello, Roselle, Market Monday. Thank you. Okay, so who I have here today, I have Brian Ruiz, who is a real estate attorney. Many people ask me, Pete, do I need a real estate attorney? Um, attorney for my transaction, whether you're on the buying side or the, or the selling side, absolutely. So what I have here is the gentleman that can answer questions on how he represents the buyer when they're purchasing their home and how he represents a seller when they're selling a home. Brian, thank, thank you Pete. so much for coming here Thanks today. Thanks for having me on, Pete. Appreciate it. So we're going to talk a little bit today about what you do for most of my clients that uh, we worked with in the past. So let's talk about the buyer side. I represent a buyer. I refer them over to you. Let's talk about our first steps. Okay, so when you first are presented uh, with an offer as a buyer from a seller, you're going to have this 13 page, 43 paragraph contract, standard New Jersey form contract in front of you. Uh, it's a lot to take in. Uh, after you sign your name to it and it gets delivered to the other party, that starts what's called the three day attorney review period. Uh, in that three day period, your attorney has three days to uh, send notice to the other side of the transaction, either to their attorney, if you know who they are at the time, or their real estate agent, uh, letting them know that you disapprove of the contract in its standard form, and the, form, the contract would be acceptable uh, with the following provisions. So what I do then is work in conjunction with you to revive to revise, excuse me, to revise that, uh, those, provi those provisions. Uh, as a buyer, you're looking to uh, get the most out of your inspections of the home. You're looking to give yourself the most time to lock in your, your mortgage. Uh, you're looking to, uh, for the seller to give you as much information as possible and as much assurances as possible uh, as to the condition of the home, the history of the home. Uh, so you want to ask questions like, are you aware of there are any asbestos in the home? Uh, have there been any history of prior flooding? Uh, all these things. Those items are also covered in the seller's disclosure. That's another very long document. People get confused filling it out. That's why it's important to cover it in the attorney review stage. Uh, after your attorney sends in the letter saying that it's been disapproved, 
if, you know, following or pursuant to the following provisions, that then freezes the three-day period. If you don't have an attorney and, they, and nobody says that this is unacceptable, you are then stuck with every provision, uh, every 43 paragraphs of this contract. So certain things I take out of the contract. Uh, I take out the time of the essence rule, which means that if you don't meet a certain date or a certain deadline, you may be uh, subject to breach of contract. Uh, you definitely don't want that hanging over your head. Uh, no automatic waivers. So like if it says you have five days to get back your inspection report, I'll try to make it longer than that. Seven days, ten days. You, may, you probably won't need that, many, that much time, but at least you have it. Um, anything that affords you additional protections throughout the entire course of the transaction, that's what my attorney review letter does. I send it over to whether I'm on the buyer side or the seller side, I send it over to the other attorney. Uh, that attorney then usually within a day or two responds saying that my provisions are, my, or my revisions, excuse me, are acceptable or not acceptable. Uh, we then go back and forth, typically two or three days, and we reach an agreement uh, in conjunction with our clients uh, to make sure that we're all comfortable with the language of the contract. Uh, there's a lot of boilerplate language in these contracts that need to get tailored to whether you have the seller side or the buyer side uh, and so that's very important. Um, on the buyer side again you want to look towards uh, your, your mortgage, you want to look towards if it is a mortgage um, and you want to make sure you're not bringing too much cash to the table up front. Uh, I always try to hold uh, deposit in my trust account uh, rather than the other attorney and you want to also give yourself as much uh, of an open con inspection uh, contingency as possible so um, if you want to bring in any secondary inspectors and things like that based upon your initial inspection report uh, now's the time to lay it out in the attorney review letter there's a lot of things that if you don't lay out in the beginning, you're not going to be able to revise them later on. Once attorney review is concluded, it's pretty much concluded. Uh, so it's hard to go back in time and redo those things. Right. That's, what's, uh, that's one of the most important parts about attorney review. Now, Brian, once we move on to the contract, how many days do we have to do home inspections? Standard. So standard form, uh, they'll, they'll tell you 14 days in the contract. So if I'm a buyer, I want to try to stick to those 14 days. If I'm a seller, I want to try to throttle that back to about 10 days because I want to make sure that this deal is going to go through and it moves as fast as possible. Um, typically, the realtors will get those inspections, you know, they'll work with you to get those inspections scheduled immediately. But uh, I want to make sure that if you're buying the property, you have as much time as you can to get your inspection report review it, take a look at it with your attorney, and then get any repair requests you may have over to the other side. As a seller, I want to try to limit the inspections as much as possible or the time limit on those inspections. Uh, I want to say, hey, in 10 days, you got to have that inspection report done. Then within three days of that, you got to get me over the report and any type of repair requests you may have because you want to keep it moving. Uh, if you know if the deal were to be canceled over the ins an item found during inspections then you want to know that you don't want to drag that out uh, you also want to define what can be considered a defect in inspections so uh, I typically define a defect in accordance with what the New Jersey Supreme Court says is a, def a material defect which is a, 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 excuse me anything that materially affects the habitability, safety, or, or uh, value of the home. Um, as a buyer, you want to, you know, your inspection report's gonna come back with a hundred different things on it. You're gonna come to me with that inspection report, and I'm gonna tell you, here's the, maybe the 10 items that you really wanna hone in on and ask for. Uh, we're looking for things such as bad plumbing, bad electric, leaking roofs, those types of items. And then we, I take those over to the seller's attorney and request repairs. Um, as a seller, it's important to 
work with your attorney uh, uh, during the inspection period because you don't want to make repairs on items that you don't need to under the contract. You want to limit uh, the amount of repairs you need to do. Uh, and that's very important, I think. Um, after that, after the inspections phase is complete, uh, as a seller, the most important thing an attorney can do is make sure that the buyer's mortgage is moving along. You want to make sure that you get that commitment locked in 30, 35 days after the conclusion of attorney review. Um, before all that even happens, you want to make sure that the deposits are there. Uh, they're called earnest money deposits for a reason. They're there to keep people honest, to keep the buyers honest and engaged in the transaction. Uh, so those are some things that attorneys do for you, Darren. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, very important that you have an attorney to represent you in these transactions so you're protected all the way through. Um, so also let's talk about too, Brian, when the appraisal comes in. The appraisal comes in, you know, if you're on a buying end, if the house appraises, then you're fine. If it doesn't appraise, that sometimes causes a little bit of a, you know, riff in the uh, your back and forth. Let's talk about that a little bit as well. All right. That's a great topic. So. There's two schools of thought on that. The first school of thought and the most common that you'll see are as a seller, if, or as, I'm sorry, as a buyer, if you're buying a house for $350,000 and the appraisal comes back at $340,000, you say, well, I only want to pay $340,000. Now, you want to have that language ironed out in the attorney review letter so that there's no that you don't have to spend a ton, ton of time on that later or there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, so a lot of times people will say, if it underappraises, if the home underappraises, the parties have the right to renegotiate a sale price in good faith. Uh, if they can't reach a new sale price, which typically the buyer wants to be the appraised value of the home, then either party can cancel the contract. Uh, the other school of thought is that if the home under appraises, but it does not affect the buyer's ability to obtain the loan. Uh, there's a, they have enough uh, ratio of money that they're bringing to the table that it doesn't throw off their loan, then you still have to move forward at that sale price, uh, no matter what it gets appraised at, with the thought being that when you, as the buyer, came there and made an offer, you felt that that house was worth that money, and that's why you made that offer. So that's why you want to if, and if you're the seller, you don't, you know, you, you want that language in there. If you're the buyer, you want the other language in there that you have the right to negotiate. Um, and that's something for the two attorneys to work out uh, and make sure that you're protected when the time comes for appraisals. You always hope that you don't have a problem with, with appraisals, but it does happen, it happens. It happens happens quite often. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Great information, Brian. I really appreciate all that. Hopefully this was uh, very helpful for uh, people out there that are looking to possibly sell or people that are looking to you know, buy right now. Um, you know, I get that question a lot. I, don't, I ask this question to all my, peop all my clients. Do you have a real estate attorney? When they tell me no, I do make a couple of referrals. Brian is one of uh, my colleagues that I have and I trust. I give referrals out all the time and Brian has helped me in a lot of transactions throughout the years. So any questions that you may have, um, you know, feel free to reach out to Brian when it comes to uh, real estate law, whether you're own a home or you're thinking about buying a home, and yeah, you may have to have some things cleared up. Um, once again, Brian, I appreciate it, Pete. thank you. For thank you very today. much. Really appreciate all the all right. information. Thank you, Pete. Roselle, thank you so much. That was Brian Ruiz. Okay, Roselle, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, please like, share, and comment on the video. Um, tag anybody that you think that will benefit from this information. Also, I am still doing interviews around town in the community. So once again, keep tagging those business cards underneath uh, where the comment section, I will reach out to you and set up a uh, time and date where we can uh, feature you on Market Monday. Take care.